Those things cost money. And in paying for those things, I'm also bettering somebody else's life. So if I buy a television or I buy a phone or I buy a car or whatever, every time I'm paying for something, I'm helping somebody else make their life better based on whatever it is that they do. And if we all do that fairly, if we all make those transactions fairly, then we all lift our head higher. We all lift our, our quality of life higher. Hey everybody, it's David Nagel. Welcome to What's the Truth. Today I have my guest, April, and she has a question that we're going to see if we can help her with. So what's your question, April? How can we help you today? Hi, David. I have a problem with having procrastination and loss of focus, and that keeps me from reaching my goals. I don't know how to stay focused on the task at hand. I just seem to get distracted and start working on other projects and don't finish the thing I really need to focus on. Okay. All right, so let me ask you this, because whenever I see procrastination come in, it's an interesting thing, because I'll bet you you don't procrastinate everywhere in your, in your life, correct? No. Right. So it, it then gets down to why are we procrastinating, and one of the first questions that I always ask a person is, the thing that, you're, that is your goal, whatever that, whatever that is, how bad do you really want that? Is that something you're really in love with that you really want to make happen in your life? Or is this something that you feel more that you need to do, but you're not really excited about doing it? Where are you on the spectrum there? Well, um, I'll give you the case in point. It's like billing for my business. I really need to do that to reach my goals in my personal life, but it's not something that's a fun project to tackle. Okay. So generally when a person has a, when, when a person has a business, there's one or two things that they're exceptionally good at in their business. The other things they, especially if you started off just by yourself, you do it because there are things that need to be done. It's just responsibilities that have to be done in the business. But the idea is that you move to a place where you can afford to bring somebody else in to actually do that work. Um, Are you at that place yet where you can do that? I do. I've hired some, I've hired an associate that, and ask, actually that's one of the tasks that I'm trying to unload off of my plate and onto hers. I just haven't got there yet. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a very big thing to be able to do that, but there's a psychological hiccup for a lot of people. And that is, if you were raised with the idea that you really have to do everything yourself, or you have to be in control of everything. And when you're talking about billing, you're talking about your financial livelihood, you're talking about the responsibility of the business. There's a lot of weight with consequence onto those things. So you have to make sure that you have somebody that you can trust, that's competent in what they're doing, and that you trust to turn over that aspect of the, uh, of the business to that person to be able to do it. And one of the best ways to develop trust in doing that is also to verify what that person's doing, hold them accountable and, and constantly be checking on making sure that they're doing the job the right way until you have enough trust to know that the person's going to do it the right way all the time. But even then you still have to have your finger on the pulse of it to some degree. So is it that you're procrastinating with turning it over to them or you're, you haven't turned it over to them and you're still doing it all yourself, but you're having trouble doing it yourself. I would say that um, I've turned over part, I have her working with me on it, but I just, part of it is I'm still on the factory floor doing a lot of the work. So when it comes time to do the billing, I'm doing that on the weekends when she's not working. So during the during the week when she's here to do work with me, you know, I'm not working on billing because I'm, I'm like in court and I'm preparing for court and I'm meeting with clients. So that, that's been one of the, the issues. I guess I just have to make it a priority. You have to make it a priority. You absolutely do. Otherwise you're going to keep doing something that makes you miserable, which is no fun. It's probably not why you own a business to begin with. I mean, most people that I know, 
that own their own businesses because they want to be able to call the shots for their own life and enjoy the freedom that that brings along with it. But there's definitely things that in the business that you, that you shouldn't be doing if, just from the mere fact if, if you don't like it. So you've got, to, you've got to schedule the time to train this person to be able to do it correctly. And that's what needs to be a priority over everything else. Get that done, hit, turn it over to that person and let them be their brilliant genius in the thing that they, that they actually like to do. And if you remember that, with all the areas of your business, one of, the, one of the great things about it is it gives you the ability to scale. So those practices allow you to learn how to actually scale your business to whatever size that you want to create it for yourself. Okay, that's very helpful. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you are on your weekend, and you're procrastinating doing it, what are you telling yourself in your mind when you do that? Like, what's the conversation in your head? Well, I, I start thinking about priorities and although billing the money, billing the, the client and getting the money is important and there's really nothing more important, I start telling myself, oh, I'm not ready for that hearing. Oh my gosh, I need to call that client. I need to set up a time when I can meet with them so that we'll be ready for court. Um, I need to get those subpoenas out. Like I just start telling myself about all the other things that I need to do for the upcoming week or two weeks ahead. If you were to really, really be honest with yourself about the actual billing process, what is it specifically in the billing work that you're avoiding? Is it looking at the money? Is it having the, to look at what's coming in, what's going out? That, is it that type of thing? Or is it just the activity itself? I think it's asking people to pay more money. It's asking people to pay more money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, why does that bother you? I don't know. It's just not, it's never been a comfortable thing for me to talk about money with people. It's not for most people. I mean, the way most of us are raised, it money is a very intimate thing and you don't discuss it with strangers, that, that type, of, type of ideology. Mm -hmm. But let me share something with you that might help make a difference if you, if you kind of let this sink in a little bit. Okay. It's actually a great gift when you offer a service to a person and you allow them to pay and you ask them to pay for it. Because it's one of the things that helps a person build self-esteem and confidence in their life that they can actually take care of themselves and, and do that process of paying another individual for what they're worth or whatever, the, whatever it is that the, surface, the, the service is worth. Unfortunately, we're not really taught that that much when we're, when we're growing up. However, I have always found that it's a very sensitive subject for most people. Um, and it comes from one of two things. Either they were taught that it's wrong to ask people for money, or they've got something going on inside of themselves where they don't feel that they're actually worth being paid whatever it is that they want to be paid. And if you, if you have that, if part of that is an issue, think to yourself about where the real value exists with the service that you provide. Because you provide a service for someone that can always be drawn to some kind of a monetary value in their life. It really doesn't matter what a person does. Money touches about every area of our life. So there, there's always some kind of a monetary value for the, the, the individual that you're, you're actually helping. Um, that also helps determine what it is that you're going to charge a person based on the service that you're providing. What are you helping them with in their life? And how does that affect their life from a benefit perspective, whether it's monetary or, or, or what, what specifically do you help them with legally? Uh, family law, I do child, mostly child custody, but also um, property distribution. Okay. Well, that's, that's a big one. That's a real big one. I mean, there's, there's huge value in that for another individual. I always like to look at it like this. If, if, I, if I'm charging you for a service that I'm providing to, to you, you're worth it. 
You're worth paying for that service. Your family is worth paying for that service. I'm worth receiving the money for that, for all the hard work and the education that I put in and cultivating my expertise to be able to help you with whatever problem it is that I'm helping you. So come from a place of gratitude when you're asking a person for money. Know that it's, it's actually a great gift that you're giving them, whether they're conscious of it or not. Like I know that a lot of people won't be conscious of it, but it still builds healthy self-esteem for a person to be able to take care of themselves, take care of their family and do the things that they need to do that are right for them. And it's also, it helps you build self-esteem for yourself so that you can ask for more. You can increase your prices if you want. You could change your clientele if you want. You can grow your business to whatever level that you want. Okay, I hadn't thought of it that way. It makes a big difference. It's about the self-esteem for the other person. It really is. It really is. Money is one of the most intimate things that we ever transact in our life. And one of the reasons for it is, is that most people trade their very life for the amount of money that they bring in. Like if you go to work every day, you're working 8, 10, 12 hours a day, you're trading 8, 10, 12 hours a day for a paycheck, for a certain amount of money so that you can live your, so that you can live your life to the quality that you want to live your life. You can take care of your family. When we have to give that money back for something, we want to know that we're making a fair trade. But it also feels very good to be able to, to say, I can take care of myself. I can pay for this. I can pay for my house. I can pay for services. I can pay for the welfare of my children or my spouse or, or whatever it might be. And that's part of uh, a healthy self-image for an individual to be able to do that. So there's absolutely no shame in it. You have a 100% right to collect the fees that you're charging a person for the service that you're doing. And you should feel very proud about what you're doing and the gift that you're giving to your community. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any book recommendations to help me that you can think of that I could read to help me work through that? And I think you should start off by reading the book, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. It's probably... It's, a, it's one of the most fundamental books ever written. And it was written in the early 1900s. So you have to kind of pardon the, the way that the grammar, the way that the book was written. But he really explains from a fundamental perspective why money is important and how it benefits our lives all the way around and why actually getting rich is a very important thing for a person to consider in their life. Because through the entire process of transacting money for service, everything grows. Like we raise the level all the way around it. For me to get better in life, I have to study, I have to apply myself and I need things to do that. Those things cost money. And in paying for those things, I'm also bettering somebody else's life. So if I buy a television or I buy a phone or I buy a car or whatever, every time I'm paying for something, I'm helping somebody else make their life better based on whatever it is that they do. And if we all do that fairly, if we all make those transactions fairly, then we all lift our head higher. We all lift our, our quality of life higher. The book helped me out many, many years ago when I was really trying to wrap my mind around it also. That, so fundamentally, I think that is an absolutely fantastic book uh, to start off with. Okay. And then I don't know if you've ever read any of the Rich Dad, Poor Dad books, but Robert Kiyosaki's viewpoint on um, what we invest our money in with almost every transaction in our life either makes our life better or it makes our life worse. And he, was, he had two fathers growing up. He had his biological father and a stepfather. One was wit, wit, rich and the other one was broke. And the lessons that he learned was that the rich dad invested his money, put money in things that would actually appreciate in value, and the poor father did not do that. So um, he created a whole series of books around that, that, that are, he does have techniques on what you can do, but psychologically, they're very good. One other book that I would recommend that you get, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. 
It's four simple agreements that you can make with yourself every day that will completely increase the quality of your life. And of course, you can check out my book, The Millions Within. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. My husband read two of these books recently, and he, um, he read The Four Agreements recently, and he got me The Science of Getting Rich. So I'll start on those two. Fantastic. Awesome. Very good. Do you feel this helped? I do. Yeah. Good. All right, everybody. If you enjoyed this episode of What's the Truth, and you would like the opportunity to be featured on a future podcast, text TRUTH to 469-447-7775. Thank you very much, April. It was a pleasure talking with you. I sure hope I helped and you make it a great day. Thank you. All right. Hey, if you like this video, be sure to share it on social and leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe.